Yeah, okay. Oh, there it's on. Okay. I'm, um... I'm coming to you this morning. I was looking at the computer over there instead of right there at the camera. To show you where I'm at. Well, I'm at the same place I was yesterday. So, but I have to show you what I... See, I was doing something this morning. as was um, clearing off my table a little bit. So it's a little bit more not so um, cluttered. Because I am a clutter bug extraordinaire. And I clutter things. So I thought I'd unclutter a little bit. So you all wouldn't think I'm completely a whole big old clutter bug. Okay, let's see, how does this look? You know, I was watching some commercials. Sometimes I just watch some commercials on TV, uh, not on TV, but on the videos, just so that it adds up into people's, because some, pe some people um, depend on the money that they make off of their um, YouTube channels. So I'll watch their, I'll watch their um, commercials that the advertisements just so that they have more um i watch my own too <laughs> Jeez, yeah same reason but um but i don't know if you watch your own if that counts but i seen this one advertisement just gotta reach over there and get my fabrics <coughs> excuse me for these boom sticks you ever heard of them and it's some kind of makeup for old people that may, you put it on your face and it makes your face shine or something. I don't know how much they are, though. I watched the advertisement. I'll have to see how much they are because I might get me some boomsticks. I don't know, but if it's something you have to, like, have a monthly something, then I won't do it. But I'll have to watch that again so I can see how much it is. But anyway, get me some boomsticks. They might be really expensive. Okay, this morning, let me show you what I was doing. Right here. I'll show you what I was doing right here. Okay, let's see. Right here. There. No. There. Yes. Okay. See, I was taking small pieces, little pieces, and just stitching them together in all different manners of shapes. But so all of these pieces have at least two pieces together see this one's got one two three four together but that's what i was doing is just making my small pieces into larger pieces and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start taking these here pieces that are like medium sized pieces and i'm going to make them into larger pieces and so, like, I'll take these two, and this is sort of a straight edge here, and this is sort of a straight edge here. So I'm going to take them sort of a straight edges and put them together just right here, like this, right there. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to stitch them. So it'll make it a, like a little bit of a lark. Ouch! Oh, gosh. Gas pedals over there. Arthur Laddis. My friend Arthur. Giving me a little trouble. Okay, so I moved my arm over here to see. So now I made that piece into a little bit of a larger of a piece. And um, then I'm going to reach over here to my arm. And I'm just going to iron that. My iron hot. Okay, then I'll get me another piece here. And, um, oh, I didn't iron that one. It works better for me if I iron them and so they're flat. Okay. So then I'll take this piece and see, um, well, maybe I'll put this piece right here because those two pieces are kind of straight. So I'm going to put those two pieces right here. Oh, dang it. My ankle. My ankle hurts. Okay, here we go. Now. Let's 
stitch that together and see what we have. And see, so you, that's what you do. You stitch together and see what you have. I've been watching so many quilting shows, and I have learned so many different kinds. Well, I haven't learned them. I haven't actually learned them. I heard about all these different kinds of... Um, you know, I look at that screen, and all you can see is my double chin. Now... Hmm. Okay, but anyhow, so many different kind of quiltings. Quilting, um, I've learned about slash quilting, about, speaking of slash quilting, this was my slash cutter that my friend Donna sent me. She sent it to me for Christmas, but I already got it. And, um, but that's a slasher. That actually slashes... The slashings in a slash quilt. Then I found out too, I didn't know that. Here I thought that I was like all smart and stuff and um, learned about the, the way I'm putting my quilting together. No, that's called a rag quilt. I didn't invent it at all. Here I thought I invented it, but no. It's, it's called a rag, a rag quilt. So, and, and so it's sort of like a rag quilt. Well, how the way I'm putting my quilt together. And um, it's sort of like a rag quilt, but a rag quilt, I, you know, on the videos I watched anyway, the rag quilt really is a lot prettier than mine because on the rag quilt I watched one lady oh my gosh she makes such beautiful quilts and um, her rag quilt she's got an accu quilt a qu accu quilt I think it's called that it just is like a machine that cuts your squares and she's got an, a machine a die that cuts her 10 by 10 inch quilt squares um, and it, it cuts her quilt squares into into those 10 by 10s and already has all of the snips on the sides because apparently like when you put your your rag quilt together on the seam here you you seam it I mean your seam sticks up and it's supposed to be like an inch or something mine isn't like that I do mine different. Everything I do is different. I just do things different. Okay, let's see. So I got that little piece together. Now I want to make, I want to take some more of my small pieces here. And I'm going to, see, I've taken these and I've put like two pieces together. That's what I was doing earlier this morning. But I knew you all wasn't awake yet. So I didn't want to bother you yet. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a bother. And so, so instead I cleared off my table, but actually clearing off my table, I made a bigger, fatter mess, a bigger, fatter mess in other places. So, oh, geez, that's just what I did. That's how I work. But anyhow, but then I'll, I'll fix that later too. And here comes my two dogs. And the husband. Well, that's why the two dogs is coming because the husband. Now I'm going to press that open with my little arm. I've seen some people, um, some quilters, that really have these little bitty irons. They're little. They're only about eye long. I need to get me one of them. No, I don't. i got a perfectly good iron. Why would I want a little one? i got an encaustic white iron. I wonder how that would work. Now let me see if I take... What else do I have here in this here stack? Oh, here I got a three-piecer. Now what I'm going to do right here is, well, maybe I'm going to go over here. This is kind of straight here, and this is kind of not straight here. So I'm going to put those two pieces together, and I'll use this side as a guide. And they're not straight, but I'm going to sew a straight line anyway. Well, as straight as I can sew. 
This is my style of quilt, I'm telling you. And, I, and this is my style because there ain't no rules. They ain't no rule. And so now I'm gonna take my my um this here rotary cutter and I'll cut right on the other side of that stitch line and pull that extra off. I don't need that. Throw that in that shoebox. And then see there how pretty that is. That's coming up nice. And so I just like it. All the all the pieces are different shapes, different sizes, different colors. And I think that is pretty awesome. I think that is pretty awesome. Okay, let me put that down there. Because now I'm getting medium-sized. Medium. Medium-sized. I had little bitties. Then I made them kind of small. And now I'm going to the medium size. See, and my pieces are different. They're different. You know, they're all different. Different colors, different sizes, different shapes. But then I can take, like this side here, this piece is almost straight, but not quite straight. See? Like that? And I'm going to take that one. I'm putting the right sides together. And kind of, see, now that's, that piece there is much bigger over here, you know, like that. So I'm going to, um, it's hard to describe. It's, it's. Hard to describe complete chaos, chaotic. And so it's hard to describe it. But see what I'm doing though is keeping my stitch line pretty much straight. Pretty much straight. Not perfectly straight, but pretty much straight. Are you leaving, Papa? No, I'm going to get a coffee refill. How's yours? Mine's fine, thanks. Coffee refill. It's still morning here, so me and Papa are still... Usually we're sitting on a porch about this time, but we're not on the porch right now. It's okay. So we're in here. Hanging. Just hanging. Just a hanging. In room A. This is called room A. My craft room is called room B. But this is room A right here. See how that's coming? Look at that, how beautiful that is. I'm telling you, that's beautiful. Okay, that's, put that in the medium size pile now. And then, see here how nice that is? Then I'll take this piece and I'm gonna put that sort of like this way. No, maybe I'll put it sort of like this way. And again, I got, I got the edges sorted together, but they don't match. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew that, stitch that line. And I'll try to keep myself a nice straight line. As long as the line is straight, life is good in the hood. Life is good on Springtime Street. Okay. Make sure it's in there too. And then now I'll go again with my rotary cutter and cut just this side of the, the outside of that seam. And then flip that over and see so now I do have a straight edge right there where I stitched it and I have sometimes you'll see like here now I just press that down so it's flat and so see sometimes I take let's see what should I use which one should I use which one where should I go let's try this piece right here. Okay. I got press. I didn't press that one earlier, so I'll give that a little press right now. Give that a little press, and then see what I'm going to do on this piece now. See, this is what you can do too. You can go here. I'm going to go just like this. I'll put this right here, and it's sort of in the middle. So I got all this up here. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch now my straight line. Across my almost straight line. You know, you could actually take a ruler and a pencil and draw a straight line if you so chose. But that's too much work for me. And so um, 
But now, see, I did my straight line across here, so this is the patch, and this is the extra over here. This is the extra. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut that like this, but then, see, I now have this piece to sew on something else. And so then, here, I've got here, i got now three patches, patches in that piece right there. And I think that's beautiful. What time is it, Papa? It are 10 minutes after 10. 10 minutes after 10? Okay. In the a.m. In the a.m. Okay, so I'll put that down there in that pile. And then I'm going to take these. See how when I put them together, I didn't, I just put these two pieces together. And they're all jigger jabbered. They're, nothing is, nothing is straight. Nothing is, well, I was going to say nothing is beautiful, but that isn't true because it's beautiful. It's beautiful nonetheless. But my word, I'm telling you, and just just yesterday now, somebody told me about a gypsy quilt. I've never heard that word before in my life, gypsy quilt. And um, and so I looked that up. I haven't done a lot of research on the gypsy quilt yet, but um, but I am. I am going to do some more some more learning about the gypsy quilt because it might be something I can still be adding. But um, I look at some of the quilters. I just love watching them quilters. There is some quilters that have, they said it's the, they have a quilting studio. Studio. And behind them, in behind them, is um, like bolts of fabric. Bolts. I mean, bolts of fabric. But then I got to thinking, I wonder if these people with those bolts of fabric are actually filming. Maybe they work in a fabric store, or maybe they have a fabric store, or, you know, maybe it, it's a store. And maybe they're just filming from their store. Because, man, I can't imagine somebody having, owning a jillion bolts of fabric. But maybe they do. Maybe they do. That's a lot of fabric. I have a lot of fabric, but um, and um, but I do have one piece of fabric that's on a bolt, and that's because I ordered from Joanne, Joanne Fabrics, because I wanted to get some muslin, and so I needed. So you have to order at least five yards. So I ordered five yards of muslin because I do use that much. I use a lot anyway, so I figured I can order five yards of that. And when it was delivered, it was delivered on a bolt. So I have one bolt. So see how pretty that is right there? Maybe I'll take this piece and, and see, now that's, that's the top part. And then here I'll put this piece, I'm going to put this piece across like this. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine here and I'm going to stitch. And um, stitch that together. That's shaky, isn't it? Yes, I know I'm wearing the same shirt I was wearing yesterday. I thought about putting on a different one, but since the hubster is one that does all the laundry, I can't make him do that much laundry. Isn't that right, hubster? Yep. Yeah, so um, so I wore the same shirt because I didn't I didn't dribble any of my food on it or anything, and I didn't work hard enough to sweat, so I could wear my shirt two days in a row. <coughs> and then the hubster doesn't have so much laundry to do. Actually, he doesn't mind laundry. He does more laundry than he has to. Sometimes he just goes and collects all the dog beds up and. Just washes all of them for no reason. Well, I guess there's a reason. I don't know. He's the man, aren't you, Papa? I was in... <clears throat> Zoe came to me and yeah. said, told me, 
Yeah, so we told you that? Okay, hang on. I gotta talk to Timmy. Wait a minute. I can pause. Pause. Okay, there. Now, I was gone for a minute. You didn't even miss me, did you? You didn't even know I was gone. So, I was talking to my grandson. Most of all of you know about my grandson's um, issues that he was in prison for three and a half years and he's been out now for about a month and um, he was in for, of all things, reasons that I don't think he should have been in prison for, but he had, he had, um, he had threatened suicide. He had threatened suicide. And he had a gun. And so because he had a gun, they didn't care what he was going to do with it. He had a gun. And so... And in New York, that's a no-no. Yep, and in New York, that is a big no-no. And so he, for possession of a firearm, had to spend three and a half years in prison for possession of a firearm. Now, if he was here in Florida and threatened suicide, he would have went to a psychiatric facility. But he was in New York. But he spent three and a half years. It was supposed to be four, but he got out in three and a half. Thank goodness for that. But he's been out for about a month. He's got two jobs. And so he goes from one job to the other, back and forth. And he is so happy to be out of the slammer. And he sure does not consider suicide anymore. So, bless his heart. He's 25 years old. He spent oh, almost four years of his life in prison. That's sad. But, um... So, it's always good to talk to him. He was calling me from work. <laughs> He was calling me. He works at a play at a distributor at a at a vehicle. His one job is detailing at a um, no a, a dealership, a car deal dealership. I don't want to say the name. And um, but they they only they only deal with with fancy fancy cars there. Fancy cars at this dealership. So he was detailing a Maserati. Maserati. And um, my son works there too. My son works there too, but he's a mechanic. And he's working on a Tesla. <laughs> so they get to work on the fanciest of cars down there. So, And boys love toys. And so they love their jobs down there. They love their jobs. Them fancy schmancy cars. So, now see how that, let me see, let me press it a bit right here. See how that's coming? Um, it's a little bit long. Now see, it's kind of long. So I need to get another piece that's going to, I'm gonna make another kind of a long piece. I'm going to get another piece that's kind of long and get it together. And, um, and, um, and so this one will be kind of long. Trim off that little bit of an edge there and let it grow long it's up for me it's easier if i press each piece that's why i put my iron and my little iron and pad close closer to me so i can reach that now see here i'm going to do hmm, this edge it's not straight it's crooked but I'm going to use that one. Then this is not straight. It's crooked. But I'm going to lay them together. But my line, my stitch line will be straight. 
ish. Straight ish. You see that? So here you can take so many scraps. This is just definitely scrap quilting here. Very scrappy quilting. And because you're only using up scraps, you don't have to go buy fabric unless you just don't have any. Um, somebody suggested to me yesterday that I put on my Etsy um, scrap fabrics and sell it by the pound. And so, or whatever, you know, weigh it. Say, okay, I've got this here package and it's 13 ounces of scraps. And... Um, I don't know. I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll try that, just scrap, because some people just don't have scraps. I just assume everybody has scraps, because I do, but, um, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe I might do that, too. I got to finish up my, getting all my mailings out for my sale. I'm not quite done with that. Well, actually, I've gone as far as I can with it, because I'm... I'm, uh, I've got a few that I'm waiting payments on so I can get those mailed off. And um, and then I'm going to work on my little Etsy. So, And I haven't used Etsy for a while, so kind of, I'll let you know. I'll let everybody know, because I let everybody know everything because my life is an open book. I have no secrets. And, um, and I'll let you know when I do have things listed. And so I'll probably make up like little scrap packages and I'll, I'll have them described anyway, you know, on my, when I do the, Papa, that's your phone out there ringing now. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I doubt it's anything. It's probably a scam yeah, artist. Scam likely. I we guess. get so many scam likely calls. Okay, that one is good. So see, my piece now is getting longer here. I'm going after length. See, so that piece is getting longer, and um, and um, let's see. I think. Let's see. Let me get part of that end cut off of that one, and then let me put that end. Oops. Maybe I don't want to do it that way. Maybe I want to do it here this way. Yeah, that's what I want to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to. Make me a straight line here. Yesterday was my daughter's birthday. So we had, I made chili for her so she wouldn't have to cook on her birthday. And which was good because she had a headache all day long. And so and so we had chili. And then her daughter, my granddaughter, Kimberly, got a cake. And so we had cake after after the after the chili. So that was so nice. And um I said to her it was so nice because I said to her, I says, I'm sorry I didn't buy you a gift. Because I don't, I'm not, I don't go shopping and just, don't, I don't know. We buy gifts when we feel like buying gifts. We don't buy gifts, um, we don't buy gifts just because it, the calendar says we have to buy a gift. We buy things when we see something and we say, oh, I think so-and-so would like this. And so, I said that, I'm sorry I didn't get you a gift, but here's chili. And <laughs> she said... And she said the nicest thing. She says, she's saying, she goes, I don't need or I want anything. My gift 
is right here sitting around me and she just put this like this in her and that just oh my god that warmed my heart so much to hear her say that yeah. Yeah. that was like so perfect and that is how she is too she doesn't she doesn't need or want anything I'll take a drink honey fix me a fix me a martini not really we don't drink martinis it just sounds pretty fancy to have on our yacht you know so I'm putting I put those two kind of longish pieces see I get run in my mouth and I don't tell you what I'm actually doing and so but I just put those two pieces together that really do not have any rhyme or reason but see now what I'll do is I'll see now I've got that straight seam all the way here that I sew I, I sewed it's just a straight seam I can see this side better and so I'm gonna go with my rotary cutter now and I'm gonna go on the outside of that seam and just cut off all that extra there we go see so then I have all this extra now throw that in the shoe box I still might pick some of those out of the shoe box and um, use them in another style is that the birthday girl nope not my birthday anymore oh it's not your birthday it's Wait, your, I got, uh, if daddy was still alive it'd be your anniversary it would be i know if daddy was alive still we would have been married 47 years today 47 years today yes I got and didn't get to the okay okay i think they heard that on the i think they heard that on the video i just turned i had my pause on while i was talking to my daughter and then I just now turned the pause off, and that's when Papa announced he was going to the little boys' room. Sometimes he just is so funny. But here I was sewing together another piece on my um, craziness here. Okay. My craziness. Okay, see, so now my piece here, the heck, my drink was in front of the camera. Now I looked at the camera, I looked at the screen, and my drink was there. Okay, so now, do I have enough space here? Yes, to make my 10 by 10 inch square. Perfecto mundo. Or do I wanna go this way? Maybe I wanna go this way. No, it won't fit that way. So we'll go this way. And it'll fit just fine this way. I love you too, sweetie. Be careful out there. No, Tommy will drive. Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the edges. Now you've lost your coffee. Miss Booch. Okay, be careful out there. There's crazy people. There's old, really old people on the road. Oh, that's right. That's you. Okay, now. So now I'm... Um, Papa's going to the pantry. We, because we're like old and financially embarrassed. <laughs> We go to the pantry. We're allowed because we're old and on Social Security and stuff. And so then they have pantries around. And there's one pantry we go to once a month. And um, today's the day to go. And it's very nice because it's very helpful. And so there is my 10 by 9.5 by 9.5 inch square. And look how it is. It's just every piece is different shape. Every piece is just beautiful. I love this. I just think this is just the greatest, greatest, greatest thing since sliced bread. See? And then all of my... So I'll put that up there on my stack of squares that are kind of finished. But then I have... Then I have all these pieces here 
that are so ready to um, see I made one square out of that now I still have these and um, that I can just start putting together again see I, I cut all them off of there see and and the thing is where I just cut them off I've got straight lines where I just cut them off so now I can take those straight edges that I just cut the straight edges I just cut and so much fun I'm sitting on a bench this is the coolest thing I I'm sitting on this bench and I can just slide back and forth Slide my old butt back and forth so I can be in front of the anything I want to be in front of. Did I put that right? Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I got it right. For a minute there, I thought I didn't have it right. See there? So, there. Pretty. To trim because it already had just very straight lines and so many different fabrics too and they all match yeah in my in my mind they match perfectly so see there and then let's see what do we have here we have it's just it is just so much fun to just start putting these things together in any which way just start adding just add them add them add them Let's see there now and then just cut along that edge right there and make that straight put them scraps back over there to be used in another fashion in another fashion and let's see I'm going to take this piece what should I do with this piece should I put this oh we got an extra piece here I got to snip that off here let me put that over the dog stuffing dog stuffing in case I want to stuff a dog no, I don't really stuff dogs. Okay, see here now, I want to make this one a little longer. So let me go with this, like this, because I want this scrap to be a little longer. So I'm going to add that to this. Just made that piece a little bit longer and a little bit prettier a little bit prettier okay this here I'm telling you when you make something that's got no rhyme nor reason no rhyme nor reason you end up with this is really maybe we should call it an art quilt maybe an art quilt oops this goes here um because there's no name for this quilt, because it's a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, but it is fun. And I do believe you all will agree that it is fun. And... It's fun and it's relaxing and it's it's therapeutic because you know we all need a little therapy these days why because we just do because the COVID going on and just everything just everything it's just because we don't want to concentrate on sadness and sickness and 
those kind of things. So we just need to have something to enjoy. And this, my friends, is enjoyable. It was so enjoyable. And, and, and you're just taking these little pieces of stuff, just pieces, just pieces, you know, and we're just going to just put them together. Let's see, let me make this one longer this way. Let's make that piece longer this way. And... Bobbin is almost empty there, I see. I need to get one of, I need to get a bobbin winder. My bobbin winder on my machine is it still works, but I gotta hold it with my hand to make sure the thread stays in the right place to wind. But I see that they make like bobbin winders. You can buy just it'll just be a winder. And so uh I'm going to wait till I have to pay my taxes. And then I'm going to, I believe I'm going to get me a bobbin winder. I want to just get me a bobbin winder. And then I'm going to sit there. Because see, I got this bobbin box. But I still have like a lot of bobbins in there with thread on it. So I'm going to use those bobbins up first. But then I think I'm just absolutely fill them Every one of them bobbins up with thread. And um, and then that way, when I'm doing something like this, because I use a lot of thread, but I have a lot of thread. Because I was given thread from a friend who used to do a lot of eBay. And somebody gave her a lot of thread, and she was going to sell it all on eBay. Then she changed her mind. She wasn't going to do it, so she gave it to me. So I have, like, a lot of thread. And so that makes me all kind of happy. I don't know why, but I am happy. But anyway, she says, I know you'll use this thread. I said, oh gosh, yes. Oh gosh, yes, I will. And so, and so I have, and it's them big spools like that you put on a serger, those big spools like that. Now I do have learned also that I did watch one person on, she was describing needles and threads. And what kind of thread do not buy and what kind of thread to do buy. And um, this kind of thread's good and this kind of thread's not good. And this kind of thread is not, yeah. And so anyway, I watched her and then I thought, oh, wait a minute. I'm 71 years old and I've just been using regular thread all this time. Never had any trouble with it, so I'll keep doing that. But there are some people that are are particular about the brands of thread and the brand of fabric and the size of their quilt squares and they are and I kudos to them because that they can stay focused like that I don't stay focused like that and so I don't have anything fancy my arms fancy it's Rowenta when I bought that, well, actually, I kind of bought it off of, what did I buy it off of? No, I don't remember the pro, the place. But they sold, they sell only, um, they sell good stuff, but they sell it at a reduced price. What the heck was that called? No, no, I can't remember. I don't know if they even still have that place. But so I got it at a really reduced price. What what that was? I don't even remember now. But I was happy to have it. But um, we used to buy from that. One time my daughter bought from that place. She bought a um, meal for two at a tea house, and her and I dressed up all fancy. We dressed in our fanciest finery, and we went to this tea house. It was, and we and we ate there, and it was so nice. It was so fancy. It was, 
it was um it's here in our town but it was so I don't know if it's even still there since the COVID but um that's what we did we went and ate there and and that's where she had bought those meal tickets was at that on that place and I don't remember what it's called but I'll have to ask her what that was what um and so they sell anything like that that you can get I mean and it's not used stuff you know you buy new stuff but it's always really really good prices and on that site too I had gotten a set of pencils one time that I wanted so badly and then they showed up on that site and I ordered my pencils and ooh, they were nice well they still are nice and so Hmm. I'm trying to remember what that's called. My memory's a little, little foggy lately. Not sure exactly why. Could it be because I've ate 71 birthday cakes? Could be. I think it's almost time for my lunch, which I didn't eat breakfast, so I better eat lunch. I didn't test my sugar this morning, so I don't know how it's going. I'm sure it's okay, though. Oh, my bobbin went empty. Okay, since my bobbin went empty, see, now my bobbin went empty, so I can just go over here and I can flip my flop, flop my new bo bobbin in there. Come out of there, bobbin. It's, this has always been a little troublesome getting that bobbin out of there. Okay, so I'm going to put the empty one in there and I'll pull this this one out of here. Brown. Doesn't matter what color you have in the thread. There. Pull that thread up. And like a heavier thread. And put the thingy back on. Beautiful. Now, where was I when I was so rudely interrupted by a... Oh, I was doing this right here. Okay, right there's where I was when I was so rudely interrupted by my bobbin. But see, that's... You can quickly switch bobbin thread so quickly if you have a box full of bobbins. I think I'll check today on Amazon, see if they've got them bobbin winders. All they do is wind bobbins, and I could sit there and wind bobbins until the cows come home, I think, real quickly, and just have them all in my little bobbin box there. And that's a little curvy a little curvy, but it's okay to be curvy. Because when I iron it, I'm not going to iron it curvy. See how it goes like right here because it's curvy? When I iron it, I'll iron it flat. So there'll be like a little pleat in there, but it's okay. I don't mind because it'll still work. It'll still make a square. Okay, so I think, what time is it? Oh, 48 minutes I've been on here. So, okay, and here's my square. Oh, yeah, that'll fit in there perfectly. See there? And see, this square went together a little bit quicker. This piece went together a little bit picker, quicker because I have these pieces over here that are, are already kind of sort of sewed together. But I'm telling you, I don't know if you all think like I do, but I am having so much fun with this. Okay, so now I will cut that off. And see where I cut that off? Look at that big piece I have. That'll go on the next square. And then I will... I got that piece 
that'll go on the next square. And see, because where I cut them off, I've got that straight edge on there like that. Then, see, putting that straight edge together with this straight edge that I just cut off, it'll stitch right together beautifully. And um, so, actually, why am I turning that instead of my mat? Okay. And so, but that's the thing, see? Those straight edges you get when you trim. And see, that'll be a big piece right here, too. This, this piece that I trimmed off is already a straight edge that will stitch together to another straight edge. And that, so it, they kind of go together quick, quicker then. And see there, I have another square. I could just keep you on here all day long showing you my squares. I don't know, one day maybe I'll do a live stream, an all night live stream, and all I'll do is just keep making squares. But now see, I'm right now I'm doing these ones a little bit different than I've done some all. But then, see, if I start getting like not bored, because I don't get bored, um, if I get like, okay, I've done enough of them, I'll start doing another. But see, right now, even though I've been thinking about making some more that are all using the vintage fabrics and the shabby chic kind of look. And so I want to make some of those. When I make my kits, my, when I make my kits, I'm going to be sure and have um, some of the shabby chic kind of fabrics like pieces of doilies pieces of different linens and stuff will be added to them and so i don't have anything like that in these last few um blocks that i've made but um i'm going to and like i say though i will be letting you know when i have those kits ready i've already got a couple interested people in that just i want to help i want to help anybody who um well, of course, I want to help myself, too, and, you know, if I can make a couple extra dollars, I'd do that, too. And I'm not going to be, pretend I don't need it, um, but, well, I don't need it. I shouldn't say I need it, because Hubster and I have enough. We always, we've always said, we have got enough, and, and we do. We have enough. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to read another um, page from my um, from my lovingly book by Helen Steiner Rice and um, let's see okay here this is what I'm going to okay yep yeah. this is what I'm going to read because I'm in oh this book is poems for all seasons by Helen Steiner Rice called Lovingly and I'm in the holiday season here in the winter season okay and I'm that's what I'm reading from these last few days now Christmas is a season for joy and merrymaking a time for gifts and presents for giving and for taking a festive friendly happy time when everyone is gay but have we ever really felt the greatness of the day? For through the centuries the world has wandered far away from the beauty and the meaning of the holy Christmas day. For Christmas is a heavenly gift that only God can give. It's ours just for the asking for as long as we shall live. It can't be bought or bartered. It can't be won or sold. It doesn't cost a penny, and it's worth far more than gold. It isn't bright and gleaming for eager eyes to see. It can't be wrapped in tinsel or placed beneath a tree. It isn't soft and shimmering for reaching hands to touch or some expensive luxury you've wanted very much. For priceless, for the priceless gift of Christmas is meant just for the heart and we receive it only when we become a part of the kingdom and the glory which is ours to freely take for God sent the Holy Christ child at Christmas for our sake. 
so man might come to know him and feel his presence near and see the many miracles performed while he was here and the priceless gift of christmas is within the reach of all the rich the poor the young and old the greatest and the small so take his precious gift of love reach out and you receive and the only payment that God asks is just that you believe. That's a very good one. I like that one a lot. We got some more. Uh, some more. Um, we got some more to read the next time, and hopefully, I'll get all those Christmas ones read before the Christmas season is over but you know though that Christmas the 12 days of Christmas is actually the first day of Christmas is on the 25th or is it the 26th but anyway and then you go the 12 days of Christmas after is the 12 days of Christmas and then it ends with the celebration of Epiphany which is on the 6th of January so between the 25th of December and the 6th of January is the 12 days of Christmas and so I usually leave my Christmas tree up until <coughs> epiphany and that's when I take it down although this year I didn't put my tree up I might still put one up I don't know but I I have some Christmas decorations up but I didn't put a tree but um okay well I'm gonna let you all go I just got to watch over you every step you take every move you make and bring you back safely and soundly and happily to the next video and God bless to you all now, where's my mouse? Oh, here it is. Here's my mouse under the stuff.